with extra distance features on tap last weekend as a part of the Speedway's 4th of July Grand Prix special. We cut right to feature highlights tonight, starting with the 35-lap Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Grand Prix. And it was Mark Castilla and Dalton Doyle starting up there on row number one, but there would be trouble behind, including the 18 of Andrew Shardner, who got into the back of the one of Anthony Lacerdo, collecting John Tesserario, Barry Kingsley, and others down there in corner number one. On the restart, Castilla would jet back out into the race lead ahead of Doyle, Mike Bruce, Cameron Rowe, and J.J. Andrews. But it wouldn't take long for Doyle and that Hawk Jr. SBS chassis to move to the low side into corner number three to take the race lead. And Bruce, in the double deuce, would work to the bottom side as well, trying to follow through to move up and into the runner-up position. And by that second corner, he was able to do so. Doyle, the new leader, Bruce riding into position number two. But on lap number four, Bruce would then find the low side, this time into corner number three, and Bruce takes the race lead in the 22 from Doyle. Doyle in the 01 would have to settle down into that second position. Castilla in the 69 riding in third. His teammate Cameron Rowe in the 77 was behind, but he would run into issues down the front straightaway, putting his hand in the air and pulling to the top side of the speedway and out of this one. Later on, Castilla would do the same down the backstretch, moving J.J. Andrews and Danny Apt up one more spot as well as they try to chase down the two race leaders, Doyle and Bruce, out in front. As they work down into corner number one, Andrews, Apt, Hogue, Jack Patrick, and Andrew Shartner all there. Patrick would eventually dive to the low side of the 73 of Alex Hogue. Shartner would follow through as well as the two cars come together out of corner number four. Josh Kerr in the eight machine would work his way to the low side as well, leaving Hogue behind. Working down the back stretch, Doyle in that number 01 would not leave the back bumper of Bruce for the entire 35 lap distance, trying to work to the low side as Bruce would continue to wash high out of corner number four with Andrews, Apt, and Patrick there in the top five. Andrew Shartner just behind in car number 18. Doyle one more time, looks to the low side out of corner number four. Bruce gets loose, but hangs on to it down the front stretch somehow. Bruce in that number 22, able to hang on to the top spot. But later, Jack Patrick dives now down onto the inside of Apt into corner number three for position number four. Apt washes up high. That allows Shartner and Kerr to move through as well down the front stretch with J.J. Andrews now closing in on the back bumper of Doyle for position number two. As the field works off of corner number two late in this one, Jack Patrick would get yet another run down the back stretch and into corner number three. But this time, the nine and the 93 would touch. Patrick goes around in the Longley Brothers Dodge car number nine. J.J. Andrews in the 93 would be sent to the tail as well. So on the restart, this is what it would come down to right here. Bruce, Doyle, and Shartner in the late stages, but out in front, it was all Mike Bruce running on to his second career. Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Modified Main Event win and his second of 2014 ahead of Doyle, Shartner, Kerr, and Lacerdo in the top five as Bruce pulls down into Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane. Uh, they say it, it's not as hard to get the second one, but I'm telling you, that was, that was a lot harder than the first one was. Uh, Dolan Doyle, I knew he was there. He wanted to get a win so bad in that new chassis, and I can't say I blame him. And he gave me a couple knocks and let me know he was there in the caution before last. And there's two worst things in racing. It's taking the lead on lap six and having the lead the entire race. It kills you. And a caution coming out with two to go. I mean, two absolute worst things to go. But it, it, was, a, it was a heck of a race. We started up front, you know, third, but we just had a great car. We got underneath Doyle, got a killer run off two. I usually don't get good runs off two. Usually it's out of three and four. And the car just stuck, and I was able to dive underneath him, and it was clean pass. I didn't make any contact. And we got a little squirrely. We were, Doyle was racing me hard. He was racing clean. He was racing me hard. It's, you can't ask for anything more than that. You know, him and I go back to the college days. And all I wanted that win tonight, but. I don't know, just not enough laps. Car got really, really loose on me on exit. And I was running quite a bit different line than he was running, so I was able to kind of poke my nose in there in the center, but we were both pretty loose off. I could see he was getting loose. He was losing up a lot of track. And uh, unfortunately, I was gonna have to use up a lot of track to get by him. So when I got under him a few times, it just didn't have enough to let it stick. Yeah, it was a lot of it was by attrition tonight. The car was the worst it's been all year. We just struggled. Uh, it was just, uh, I couldn't go to the outside with it. And uh, I had a real bad push in it. and. Uh, we were just trying to hold on there. It was, uh, it was an event. It was wild out there. Uh, 
But uh, my guys are working hard. We're all working hard. Uh, it was good to, uh, you know, get a third place finish. Got my girlfriend up here this week. So it's been fun. But uh, on a side note, too, uh, being a veteran, I shouldn't have got into Lizorto like that over a one. I just seen everybody check up and I got on the brakes. I had a bunch of rear brake in it and I uh, just couldn't get slowed down. I got into him. So that was on me. But uh, he got back up there. I seen he got a good finish. So I was happy to see that. Central New York's fastest racing action continues in the month of July. Saturday, July 12th, it's the 6th annual Isma Super Modified King of Wings at Oswego Speedway. Presented by Shea Concrete and B104.7. See the cars and stars of the Isma Super Modified Series circle the Steel Palace at over 140 miles per hour. Plus, the road to the championship continues for the Pathfinder Bank SBS Series. It's the King of Wings at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, July 12th. Kids 16 and under free. Rounding out an exciting Grand Prix night last Saturday would be the 75 lap Novella Super Modified Grand Prix presented by Fleet Pride, Seminus and Canale Insurance and up on the front row was Brandon Bellinger in the O2 and double O Joe Gosick in the Berks Home Center's car number double zero. Gosick who struggled all day long and has quite frankly struggled most of the season blasted away to the race lead off the top side of row number one to gain the early advantage. Further back as the field streams through Otto Sinnerly and Randy Ritzke is beginning to put themselves in position as they work to the low side with the 55 of Keith Champagne bringing the 47 of Bob Bond along with them. Unfortunately for Ritzkis, he would drop out early on with issues in the number 37. Meanwhile, Gosick would catch lap traffic early on in this one, working by the 0-1 of Danny Connors and the 9 of Steven Joya as you look further behind Sitterly and Dave Gruel. Make a little contact there in corner number three. Each car able to continue on as Cody Graham in the number 90 works to the high side as well. Yellow lights would come on lap 16 for a slowing Brandon Bellinger, and you can catch it in the screen right here. Just like last year, Sitterly and Gruel appearing to reignite that rivalry a touch as the seven and the 50 come together down the back straightaway under yellow. You can see here, the 0-2 of Bellinger gets sideways, tags the inside hub rail. That is what would end the night for Bellinger. Under the same caution, Sitterly would pull pit side with a broken rocker arm in the number seven machine. On the restart, Gosick continued out in front ahead of Graham in the 90 and Pat Lavery in the number 22, continuing to work to the top side of lap traffic. As you see further back, Dave Gruel, Bob Bond, and Michael Barnes working back there just inside the top five as well. Barnes trying to find the low side on Bond in the number 47 as they continue to work through traffic. Gruel making a daring attempt there on the high side in corners number one and two. Further back, a great battle here between Keith Champagne, Michael Muldoon, Joey Payne, and the 24 of Jerry Curran. Three wide down the back straightaway. Muldoon to the low side in the 51. Champagne on the top in the 55. As they work down that front straightaway one more time, Muldoon would take the advantage coming out of corner number two. Meanwhile, back towards the front, Barnes in the number 68 machine works to the low side of Dave Gruel down the back stretch and into corner number three as they work by the lap machine, the 44 of Bobby Haynes Jr. Meanwhile, lap 58, Gosick in the double zero, running away with the event, appears to have troubles out of corner number two, nearly pulls that car into the pit lane. You can see him rocking the racer back and forth here out of corner number four. Some thought Gosick was running out of fuel. As it turns out, he may have just caught a patch of oil or caught a bit of rubber on that left rear tire. Gosick continue on and would continue to lead this event. Well, Bond eventually would work by the 22 of Lavery. Next, underneath the 90 of Graham, they touch a little bit there in corner number one. Cody then loses it out of that second corner after he got up in the marbles there in corner number two. Lavery in the double deuce with nowhere to go ends up climbing up and over the top of the number 90 machine here as you catch the replay. Both drivers were A-OK. -okay. Lavery would actually rebound for a seventh place finish. After two restarts late in this one, neither Bob Bond or Michael Barnes had anything for Joe Gosick as he streams out of corner number four for win number one of the 2014 racing season for the double zero ahead of Bond, Barnes, Joey Payne with a great run in fourth ahead of Dave Gruel rounding out the top five as Joe Gosick pulls the double zero down into Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane. It's his 43rd career Novella Super Modified victory at Oswego Speedway and his first since August 18th of 2012. Needless to say, Joe Gosick was a very happy man in Victory Lane. I thought I had a flat tire or something. All of a sudden, I must have got some oil or something. 
felt like the wheel falling off the week before. I went, you gotta be kidding me. But then I, I started to get back on and it, it took off. So fortunately I had a big enough lead there. Um, I don't know, I, I, I didn't know if I'd ever get here again. <laughs> uh, thought I maybe forgot how to drive or something. Uh, we really haven't had the car at all to compete with last year or this year. And I guess uh, there's a saying you never give up and we scratched and clawed today till late. We didn't get here till late in practice. And, but we did make some positive gains, help starting up front. But uh, thank you to everyone. Um, all my sponsors, uh, all the crew, my wife, uh, everyone, I guess. Uh, and uh, uh, to my buddy Pete, um, the swing for you. Uh, I couldn't quite stay with him at the end. Uh, he was a little bit better. Uh, Joe ran a good race and um, just couldn't quite get him tonight. Uh, I wish it was a 35 tonight. We were, we were pretty bad. Uh, we just missed the setup a little bit. We were just way too loose. Uh, I was just, we were good about first 20 laps of the race. It was pretty good. And, uh, you know, we just, we uh, didn't get some good breaks like we got in the last couple weeks. And uh, tonight, you know, we didn't get as good of a start as usual and got behind a little bit. And, we just started getting too loose there, and uh, we were just kind of long for the ride. We got a few gifts with some guys falling out, and uh, roll the car in the trailer. Can't be, got to be happy about that.